Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Here I'm at The Bio Dude Houston. Behind me, I have an awesome 18 by 18 by 24 Exoterra terrarium built in. And I also have some stuff already going in here. So first I have two beautiful 18 inch pieces of ghost wood. I have a hollowed out cork tube that is sitting right here like this. These two are being supported by the ends of the tank. If we come around down here, you can see I have a tube running into the back of the cork tube with a small pump right down here. We are gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how I create my 100% aquatic bottom terrariums like I do with how I keep some of my tree frogs sometimes or you know, just some other types of avenues that you can go when creating your terrarium or vivarium. So the first thing that I wanna to touch base on is your water quality. You always wanna make sure that your water stays healthy, that you have some type of bi biological uh, filtration as well as your mechanical filtration. So there are a couple ways to achieve that. So the pumps that I use and I sell on my website are the Aquatops Max Flows. Now I got multiple sizes. This is the smallest size that I have and I'm using half inch tubing. Um, then now we can also use, uh, you know, you can also use smaller tubing than half inch uh, that you can just take the top off and swap it off with like something like this. Or if you wanted to swap it in half, you can use something like this. Attached to the top, you put a smaller piece of tubing going this way, the other tubing going this way, so water is now going in two directions to create multiple water features. But I'm only going to do one today. But, so, another thing is your filtration. Now, there's a lot of different avenues that you can go. Sometimes you can build in your filter to actually act as your pump to actually filter and pump it all in one unit. And those are great to find, but they're sometimes hard to find. Sometimes you can use filters to start your water features in the aspect of as they're coming out, you can put things under there like rocks or things to catch the water and use gravity to feed it down. And that first example are the Tetra Whisper filters. Now, I love these. These are like my favorite because if you run out of the pads here, you can always use like things like these biological medias by Fluval, which I love these. These are great for creating bi uh, bi bioactivity down on the aquatic level uh, to add positive bacteria and processes into your water. Um, and then of course, putting carbon to help absorb any of the bad stuff. And you can literally put those things in bags and just place them in this. And what's nice with how it comes out of here, which I'll show you guys in a second, you can use that as an actual lip to a waterfall and scape it down. Zoomed has a paludarium filter, which it comes out of here like a pump and then kind of rains down like this. You can use it. I tried using one of these for the red eyes and it died in two months. So I wasn't too terribly impressed, but I'm still testing them out. And if they continue to fail, probably not gonna use them or sell them. But as of right now, we have a lot of happy customers with it. So drop, drop a line in the comments if this is something that you know you guys are, have, have used. The route that I'm going to go is a little bit more not as conditional. So when you're keeping like newts, salamanders, uh, small frogs, the water, how the water moves, you don't want it to be too aggressive. So I am gonna be going a direction of using an aquatic aquarium air pump, okay? Now this air pump is gonna sit on the outside of the terrarium and then I'm gonna be using quarter inch tubing like this that's gonna plug into this air pump. So this is your tubing, quarter inch. So this is gonna plug into my air pump, which is gonna plug into a sponge filter. Now, if you guys know anything about these sponge filters is that they're the simplest things ever, but they are great for creating a water that isn't very disruptive, but at the same time, providing a good filter. And they're cheap. So down here, they have different surface areas for your bio to help get your positive bacteria and things. Then as well as your, as your carbon filter pad. The air pump tubing simply from the air pump gets plugged right into down here like this. Okay. And then you simply put this in the water and it's going to bubble up and around. And you can take these off and replace them. So you're literally paying eight, like a couple bucks for something that is really great when keeping, you know, animals that can be a little bit, uh, 
you know, sensitive to fast moving water. Uh, but on the other aspect, you can go with like the Whisper, or if you have a big tank, like a turtle tank, then we're gonna start talking canister filters, which at some point I'll cover with you guys. A lot of information. So, sure you ask, what is this for? Well, BioDude, well, well, BioDude has special for you guys some cinnamon tree frogs. So this is a group that I produced here from this terrarium over here. So let me check it out. I love this species. I've been keeping them for years, breeding them for years. I have a group of like 50, 60, 70, and they're calling. So this is my established 36 by... So that's how loud their call is. They're not loud, which is so amazing because when you keep tree frogs, sometimes they can be loud and annoying, but these guys, perfect. This is a 100% aquatic base. We are using, as far as filtration, we are going, we have a large pump right back here that has a huge carbon filter pad on the outside that we change regularly, as well as do water changes once a week. We have all life stages living down here from eggs to tadpoles, to froglets, to adults. And I've had this group, I ordered this group in two, 2007, got them from Strictly, uh, and I've had that group, I, got, I started with a group of six. I'm telling you there's at least 60 in here. And I've been selling them like crazy. Um, what's interesting about this species is they actually breed in cork tubes. So you can see how this, uh, this is like just barely dripping and that's kind of how I wanted it. I don't want to disturb the water a lot. So let me open this up. Let me see if I can actually find. So they'll actually breed in tubes like this. They'll go in here and they'll lay their eggs along the inside of the tubes it above the water and then tadpoles will hatch, fall into the water to, and it provides security. They love bromeliads as you can see over here. So here's a little baby. Well, actually that's a female. You can see her right there. Here I'm calling. Here's another one right here in the middle axle. So as you can see, these guys like bromeliads, provide them. They loved broad leaf plants. Can you tell? I have alicosias in here, emerald gems, philodendrons, bromeliads, pothos. I have a bunch of different stuff in here um, for them. So that way it's all, and it looks stacked. They like dense. They like it to be dense and they like to, there are a lot to be a lot of different angles for them to work with. And they do great in groups. So something that I absolutely love about this species Hey, Patty. Is that they are somewhat transparent. Okay. And they also play dead, which is kind of funny. So, let me. I suppose I should have put my other glove on. See that? Pretty calm. That's how these guys are. Um, and you see how he's just floating there? He's okay. Oh, and there he goes. He's like, I'm gonna play a dead and go back. So these are froglets, guys. They're maybe 30 days old, if that. They morph out almost adult size, and they are prolific. Now, these guys are from Malaysia. So they're from the swampy bogs in that area. So something that's really important is you're gonna wanna have some, something in there, not only for your wood to help make it clean, but there's, you wanna have biodegradables in there as well that can provide a surface area for your positive bacteria to build on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add water. Now this Exoterra has already been checked. So I know it works. Before you do this guys, always make sure that you check your Exoterra or your tank that it is in fact waterproof. It can hold water. So I want you guys to come back. So come on back here. You guys can see I'm using about four inches of water, give or take. There's about an inch above where my pump is. My sponge filter 
I am going to be putting the sponge filter literally right back here next to the thing. So there's going to be a, a clear tu pump tubing coming out of this top hole right here. So something I love about the exoterras is they're electric ready. So I have the electric cord coming out right here through the second for the first slot. The second slot is where the tubing from the air filter is going to, or for the sponge filter is going to go because that doesn't need a plug to operate. Again, great. So let's get this pump plugged in. You never want to plug a pump in without any water. You can see the water going. Now let's see, let's see how my planned out feature looks. It's not bad. I think I can do a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So, the, so eventually what's going to happen is this is going to get so waterlogged, this is going to keep absorbing water, that I'll be able to coat this in like a moss slurry or put some moss spore mix on here. As long as it stays wet, it's going to grow. It's going to look nice. Second, it's going to break down. That's it's going to happen. So at some point, I will have to replace this tube with another tube, but that's okay. I'm not too concerned about that. So what I want to add in first, before I go any further, um, is my Indian almond leaves. So these will provide food for the tadpoles when they breed. These will also uh, become microbial hotspots for your beneficial bacteria and stuff in the water. And they will also release things called tannins. Tannins is just a fancy word. It's, it's just no, no different from drinking tea. And it's a natural pH neutralizer amongst other beneficial things. So I'm literally just going to put them right like that. I'm happy with what my pump's doing. I'm going to put in the, I'm going to put this in at the very end, just because I don't want to mess with that right now. So first I want them to be able to breed in here. You can keep four, four or five of them in this size tank and they will thrive. So these types of tubes, prime real estate for happy, for happy time with this species. We also got some of the thicker pieces. So I know that I got a completely de-dirted emerald gem here and I'm going to grow it. I'm going to put it in here just like this. So I'm going to find a, the tube that I like. Yeah. Okay, and I love the tubes floating, that's perfect. So I'm gonna put this right here. I had a smaller tube, there you are. So there's a lot of different avenues for them. So they can go right down here and they will. And they'll lay their eggs literally right right about here. Drop into the water, tadpoles come out. These root systems are going to grab onto this cork. It's going to take over. Or they can go out back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to push that back. Here we go. And so let me go around and let me kind of see how everything's positioned. So I have a lot of open space back here on the left behind, which I'm okay with. Because for my, from what I know is the, this emerald gem, once I get it straightened out, it's actually going to grow, come back here too. And all this is going to be nice and hidden. And the pothos I put in here is also going to creep up into the back. So I'm okay with that. However, what I'm not okay with is how this is sticking out in the front like that. I dig. Okay. I can deal. Got a pothos. The exact same fashion. Put that right here, right into the back. We 
again, I'm so sorry about that noise, guys. I'm just trying to make sure that this emerald gem is in a position to succeed with what's in its way. Okay. That's acceptable. I can deal. So, well, I'm happy with back here. It's stacked, like mine over here, but it's going to lead up to somewhat of a more open area. So being from Malaysia, these guys are pretty, um, the word I'm looking for is, in my opinion, this is a relatively easy species to keep. Um, I have, I'm thrilled to have them. So, Peperomia. I sell them here at the Bio Dude for 40 a piece. So try to be pretty competitive, 100% captive bred. Um, you want to make sure that if you get wild-caught ones, that you quarantine them, test them for a chytrid, rana. Uh, you know, especially if you're not sure if the source that you're getting them from can't reliably tell you, you know, where they came from or what line they are. That's a pretty good indication that, you know, that you might want to make sure you go through extra steps in your quarantining processes and things like that. So I'm actually going to ball up this peperomia like this, and then I'm going to take some of this bromeliad wire, I'm gonna wrap. And I'm doing this because I am, here we go. All right, now it's very important that if you're gonna be using clips and stuff, that everything that you use is uh, not exposed and you know taken care of so I'm actually gonna stuff this right there okay so right now it looks I hate saying the word rough but this is gonna perk up and it's gonna attach to everything because with this system there's gonna be a couple different options that we can run for misting so these guys they love humidity they love the bromeliads they love pockets of water but they also aren't afraid to come out which again um, is another reason why I love keeping this species so this section here we cannot let dry out so I'm going to be misting that about twice a day for a good amount of time this pothos it's going to grow and it's going to fill up this backspace for them this is going to make it really really easy uh, for them to breed next we actually we have some 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 bromeliads I'm actually going to take this brom right here. I'm going to attach it like so. Now, I have found that with the consistent misting that this is going to get, that I haven't even needed to put the, uh, the spag moss on it, but I'm still going to a little bit later. Nope. So small one, one that's not going to outgrow where I'm putting it is really important. So trick, when you have trouble, make the U before. Take it, get it right here on the hilt of the plant, like so. Well, I did have it, and then I messed it up. It's okay. There we go. And then I'm going to take it and I'm just going to go opposite. And then I'm going to try to pinch. Boo. Not as good as I wanted. So since there's no pivot resting point right here, probably not going to work as much as I want it to. But I see another spot that will work right here and I might not even need a you guys hear that is a Borneos they see me making stuff and it's been uh I don't know about you guys but it's uh about a week before Thanksgiving and Texas weather has been hot so when we get rain the frogs are pretty happy about it okay we had a lot of calling. So, 
And what's going to be really easy is I literally am just going to drop the sponge filter back. It'll be the easiest thing. OK. And then I'm going to put this right there. So pretty simple design for me. Um, let's see, that's not going to stay the way I want. This will, though because it's curved. There we go. That's not going anywhere. Okay. So what my expectations are. Big time breeding ground down here. I'm going to keep these guys at room temperature. I'm not going to give them a hot spot. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to cover up this much. So there's only 50% ventilation. It's going to get misted twice a day for about 45 seconds. After these logs are nice and absorbed and wet, I'm going to start putting some moss down as well as allowing this to get clipped on established so that way this entire thing gets coated with this. That's my hope. Um, as well as provide opportunity zones for these guys. As far as feeding is concerned, I am just going to throw crickets in here. That's what I'm going to do. Um, there are other ways to do it, which I can show you um, over here. Yeah, we're good. So the Hi, Brittany. The, the, so we, you can also, so this is where we keep some of our babies for sale. And you can see we're, we're putting them in this floating eight ounce deli cup and that works great too. It's really easy. You can see the, uh, you can see the Brahms and we keep it nice and simple for them. 100% screen top for light. They don't need, so I have never provided them UVB, but it doesn't mean they're not going to benefit from it. You can see the Indian almond leaves here at the bottom, and they're going to they're gonna keep sinking and putting in tannins, so I'm actually going to put these other two right in the back. And overall, guys, I'm extremely happy with this build. And just here, get get a really good close up. I mean, these guys, like they, this is what they're for. Like they are designed to be swimming, yet be able to go out and party. I mean, check that out. Look at that. That's its heart right there in the middle. Awesome species, guys, to work with. They are nocturnal, but as you see, it's 2:30 here in Houston, and they're out here calling. So, remarkable species to keep up with. But I really wanted to do a 100% aquatic base to show you guys. I've gotten a lot of inquiries about it. We do offer all this stuff on biodude.com. We have all the filter media, all the different paludarium supplies, um, the different misting components, everything. Um, as well here at, at, at the Biodude Houston, which you can come Monday through Friday, 9 to 4, Saturday 10 to 2. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my new swag section. Do divides.